Bruchem Aboyim. We finished off last time we were together. Th- again, thank you for coming. We finished off last time when we spoke about the topic of uh, brotherly love, and uh, we got part way through, and we were in, this, in the Sedra of Kedoshim where it mentions the two verses beginning with not to hate your brother, and finishing off with the words, in the, you shall love your friend as yourself, your neighbor, Ani Hashem, I am God. Again, it's the God of the Yud Kevav of mercy. And um, again, we know, as we mentioned last week, that when two people love each other, the word for love has a numerical value of 13. When two people love each other, 13 and 13 is the numerical value of God's name of mercy, 26. You make God a, a partner in that relationship. In fact, when it says, the Yahafta Mok, you shall love your, another person as yourself, is the same numerical value as the words, Yahafta Shem Lokach, you shall love the Lord your God. So since you can, God is not something tangible you can actually hug, what you can do that by loving another Jew, you're in essence loving God. In fact, if you have a person that you really love, a friend, and he comes to town and you treat him royally, it's, it's something special. But what if his son comes to town and you treat his son exactly the same way because he is your friend's son? That's true love because you're extending that love that you have to him to anything that he touches. And now he understands that he's treated, you've treated his son that way because you love him. So by, if you can't love God by touching him directly, you can love God's children. And by doing that is a way to show how much we love God and how much we appreciate all that God does. Now, what's interesting is, is that the temple, the second temple was, even though it was a time of righteousness in Israel, it was destroyed. And the Gemara tells us the reason why it was destroyed was because of the sin of sinaschinam, baseless hatred. And that's what destroyed the temple. And even today we see that one of the hardest things to do is to bring shalom, to bring peace in all levels. And the way to bring the Mashiach, the way for us to bring the Messiah, and for us to have bring the third temple, is for us to do the exact opposite. It's called avas chinam, to love someone just to love someone, that without any reasons to do so. In fact, when it talks about I have to live reyacha, why le? It can just say, just love your neighbor as yourself. Why live to your friend? And the answer is that the way you want to be treated is the way you should treat your friend. And that's one way to deal with it. You know, we're all sensitive to many things. And when you're on the, when you're the, on the butt end of a joke, it's not so funny. And a person needs to know we have, need to put yourself in that situation. Um, you know, every year I always ask for, for forgiveness from people that I teach. Because sometimes we say things that are funny, but sometimes the other person doesn't find it so comical. And a person needs to be aware of that. That you need to be careful of everything you say. That um, words are like arrows. That you can stand in one place and hit something else a distance away by what you say to people. It's very important. And when you say the words again, you should love your friend that you should love your friend because kamocha, the way that you treat others, ani Hashem, I am God, that's the same way I will treat you. So if you want God to treat you well, treat others well. And again, using the analogy of being God's child, that when someone treats your children well, you want to treat him well. When they treat your children badly, you're in no big hurry to treat them well. Now also it says the numerical value of the word uh, of the word uh, like you is 86 which is the same as the name of God Elohim again which is the name of God of nature that he created the world Bereshis Bar Elohim God created in the beginning that just as God created the world as it says that Olam Chesed Yibana, God created this world for kindness that then Ani Hashem and it says I am God that I will treat you with mercy if you do, again, kamok, if you act with kindness to other people, then I, God of mercy, will be the one that deals with you. Not Elohim, not God of judgment. Every year on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur on the high Jewish high holidays, we ask God to leave his throne of judgment and to sit on his throne of mercy. Again, he created the world with the throne of judgment, 
strict judgment. We always wanted him to treat us with mercy. It's very hard to, for us to measure up to that level of din, of judgment. But of mercy, we're able to kind of slip by, and we keep asking him for that. Now, it's interesting. This is this mitzvah, to have the hafta reyach kamocha, loving someone else as yourself, is not a commandment to love lovable people. And I think that's where we make the big mistake. So if you know someone who is nice and kind and giving and friendly, you love him. Well, no, that, that's not what the mitzvah is about. You would love him anyways. The real mitzvah is to find someone who's a little socially awkward, a person who's a little antisocial, a person who has something about him that doesn't quite fit, and work at making him your friend. Work at loving him. And that's why it's a commandment for you to do. And that's why it's something that's more difficult. Loving someone who's lovable is not, it's a mitzvah, but it's not really a mitzvah. The real commandment comes is when you take someone who you might not normally have an affinity towards and find a way to love him. You know, it's interesting that the Jews are compared to uh, the stars of the sky and the dust of the earth. And one of the reasons being that if you look up at a, star, at a star, it seems so distant and it seems so small, when in reality it's greater than the earth that we stand on. So you need to look at a person that way. That maybe if you look at that person more, you'll find greatness with that person, even though it seems from a distance like it's not there. And so too, the dust of the earth. Diamonds, gold, they're all in the earth. You have to dig to get to them. They're not right on the surface. If you want to find the treasures within a person, you need to dig to find it. And when you dig, many times you'll find that there are really treasures in every person. Also, the uh, Yehudi HaKadosh once asked, is it possible to love all Jews equally? After all, shouldn't we love tzaddikim, righteous people, more than other people? And he, he's, the answer says he lies in the words kamocha. Just like a person loves his own body, which means but not all parts does he love equally. After all, his heart, he loves more than his hands, and his head more than his feet. And so too, is one, 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 is one able to love each Jew according to his worth based on Shara Chassidus. It doesn't mean that you have to have the exact same affection for everyone. It wouldn't be real. So there are people that you're going to love more, but that doesn't mean that you don't love everyone. And that's the part. Every part of your body is important to you. And also, just like you love yourself, even without it being a mitzvah, so too should you love your brother, lo l'shem mitzvah, also without the fact that it's a mitzvah, just because of the fact that it's a, it's a proper thing to do. It's a decent thing to do. In Nusach Hari, before we pray in the morning, we begin our prayers with the words in Hebrew, Hare Kabbalah mitzvah saseh, shal v'yahavta lebeyachu kamocha. I accept upon myself the positive commandment of loving my fellow person as myself. And this is what you say before you begin prayer. And this opens up the gates of prayer, of heaven. Now, I have to tell you that this really puzzled me and confused me greatly. When I pray, I try to be honest in my prayers. And here I am wearing my talus and tefillin, standing before God Almighty. And the first thing I do is lie to God. Because the truth of the matter is, I do not love all Jews. I find some Jews difficult to love. So when I say I accept upon myself this commandment, when I really don't, and it really confused me to the point of there were times I felt like taking off my towels and filling and not praying. Because how can you begin with a lie? And it puzzled me for a while. Then I found this solution. It's interesting. You can have a friend who has a certain way that he dresses. And it's just not your style. You can love him, but you just wouldn't wear the clothes that he puts on his body. But you still love him. And one has to know that every Jew is a part of the Shekhinah, of the divinity of God. So at his core of what he is, he's a part of God. That you love. The garments of his soul, thought, speech, and action that he puts as personality, his character traits, you may not love them. But that doesn't mean you don't love the core of what he is. And the hope is that he becomes kinder and better. But you can still love him, whatever it is, because he still has that spark of divinity. 
And that's the part that you love. And that you can love wholeheartedly, and it's not a lie. And then you work on dealing with the rest of the things. In fact, it's interesting, friendship is much better than marriage. In marriage, we try to change everyone. And we, we argue about it. Friends, we accept who they are. It's a wonderful thing. A friend is someone who knows who you are and accepts it. And somehow we get around it. And this becomes th something that a person should do all the time. Now, and the, again, so also once you begin his prayers with thoughts of benefit, benefiting others, and if he prays only for himself, it's considered to be gazela, a, 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 for, a form of stealing, based on uh, Menachem Vorka. The Gemara in Shabbos states, what is hateful to you, do not do to your friend, which can also mean don't make the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, whom you hate, into your friend, based on the Magad of Dubna. It's interesting, Rav Simcha Bunin used to say that one should see his evil inclination, his Yetzirah, as an axe murderer trying to chop off his head. So one of his students asked him, and what if it's difficult for you to imagine such a thing? <laughs> he looked at him and chuckled, and he said, it is a sign, that the, said the Rebbe, that he has already cut off your head. <laughs> now the word kamocha, like you, which means kamo ato, as you yourself, that in proportion to your own expe expectations, treat your friend. That every person, it's amazing what you can do. It's like a smile. When you smile at someone, more often than not, they smile back at you. Words from the heart go to the heart. It's amazing what barriers it can break down. And a person needs to know that. You can't just look at someone. And sometimes people carry baggage, and you don't even know what they're carrying. You know, that this, this, this anger that you see on them is really just years of buildup of hurt of people treating them badly. You know, they tell a story of two brothers. And the two brothers had fields on a mountain. And that's where they worked. And they shared this farm together. And that it was the time of the harvest season. And one of the brothers was married with five children. And the other brother was single. And they had inherited this farm from their father. And they worked it together. And at the end of the harvest season, they split the profits. They, they split the bags of wheat that they had grown half and half. And the single brother was thinking to himself, I only have myself. My brother has his wife and five children. What do I need with all the grain that I have? So what he decided to do was that in the middle of the night, he took some, some of the sacks of grain and he went over the mountain to his brother's uh, barn and he put the, his sacks of grain into his brother's barn. Meanwhile, his brother was thinking to himself, I have everything. I have the farm which is successful. I have a wife, five children. My brother, what does he have? All he has is the grain, is the farm that we have and what it produces. I have more than I need. So he decided that he would take some of his grain and he would take some of his and move it to his brother's barn on the other side of the mountain. And one night, on a moonlit night, the two brothers met at the top of the mountain, each one with a sack of grain on his shoulders. And when they saw it, they embraced and they hugged and they kissed. God saw this, and that's where he built the temple, right on the top of that mountain, where the two brothers hugged and kissed. And this is what's important to God. The two brothers hug each other, that they kiss each other. They forget the difficulties and, and the issues that they have. Everybody has them. The truth of the matter is you'll find what you want. And that really becomes the key. Whatever you look for is always there. If you're looking for negativity, you'll find it. If you're looking for, for joy and for happiness, for love, you'll find it. And that becomes the key. We, are not, we don't have to judge other people. All we need to do is love them. And when we do that, we make all of our relationships better, and then everyone becomes family, and the world becomes better. And with that, with the help of God, we bring in Mashiach Zekeno, the Messiah, and then we'll all be, again, at the third temple together at the top of that mountain with the brothers. Thank you for coming. God bless and love each other. Have a good Shabbos.